All right, Shalom, Shalom, it's the brother Kadash. I'm going to start off by giving our praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakwadash. I was down two weeks, as y'all know, but, you know, kept doing the work, you know, so I'm coming back with more videos and stuff like that. Got a lot of videos to tuck, but pretty much this is going to be called the Lean Holder, right? And um, this is a pretty cool picture that you see on your screen because you see Mount Rushmore, but then you obviously see, you know, Native American woman but you know they're really israelites you know from you know could be gad you know different tribes but the 12 tribes mixed up you know pretty much scattered you know and they have their middle fingers up towards mount rushmore right because it's still in a spirit and they know what happens even though those things are covered up things like the indian removal act you know transatlantic slavery those things get pushed to the pretty much to to darkness they don't really get that much light you know and it's pretty much like a get over it type of attitude move on type of attitude and pretty much become an american and live as an american type of attitude right so but it's still in our blood right and that's why the lord said he's coming back for redemption redemption for his people that this happened to and for vengeance right because the Lord hasn't forgot of those things that have happened to us, you know. So, I wanted to name this, like, the lean holder. Now, you know, to be a lean holder, it's like if you have a title or something like that. And a person may have it or have it signed over to them. But the lean holder on there pretty much mean that, you know, that person, roughly, you know, that person owes. Like, if you're talking about a car, that person owes money on a car. Right. So they can get the car, they can get the title transfer and everything, but there's a lien holder on it because that's who really owns it. Right. So it's kind of in a way I came up with that title because I was dealing with that a lot myself, you know, um, in the car business and stuff like that. And it kind of made me think of places like America, places like Jerusalem and stuff like that. Mystery Babylon, which is America places like the land of Canaan, right? It really belongs to the Israelites, which are the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, which make up the 12 tribes of Israel, right? It belongs to us, but Esau has it right now. So Esau's in the power seat right now. He has power. He has dominion over it because, you know, the wicked, which, you know, Malachi chapter one, Esau is the border of wickedness. You know, they had their time to rule, which is right now. Esau had his kingdom and at the end, Esau would be in rulership, and then after that, it would be Jacob's time, which is the kingdom of heaven time to rule. So, it goes deeper than just the land, but all the money, all the wealth. I mean, when you say money, you're talking about like gold and silver. So, all the wealth, all the artifacts, the ancient artifacts, you know, the land, and even our people Esau has rulership over right now. He has that rulership over the world right now. But it's like it's a lean holder because really it belongs to the Israelites. All the wealth belongs to us. You know, I've seen people on social media, they was posting about, you know, how they were stacking up gold and silver and stuff for the collapse. Right. And then I had a guy here told me he was like, um, he was like, yeah, you should invest in gold and stuff like that. You want to know what I told him back? I said, look, man, I said, don't worry. You going to bring it to me. <laughs> I told him, I told him, I told him, I said, don't worry, you're going to bring it to me. You know what I mean? We ain't got to stack up gold. You know, that's Matthew chapter six. You know, we ain't got to stack up money. We ain't got to stack up gold where thieves could break in and take it. You know, we stacking up that spiritual bank with Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. We ain't got to do none of that. You know, we're going to, it says those that should try to find life should lose life and those that should or willing to lose their life should find life roughly paraphrasing we're going to end up getting all that and all the mean over all the gold and silver that's all over the whole world all the precious stones pearls rubies everything around the whole world we're going to end up getting possession of it anyways when we get in the kingdom so all we have to do right now is have faith that's worth more than gold and silver faith in our lord and following our lord it's worth more because you have a chance if you're an Israelite to be elected for salvation, you know, to be saved for the kingdom of heaven so you can inherit it, to be joint heirs to the kingdom, right? Which is going to be the most powerful kingdom ever on earth. So, you know, um, today, Mystery Babylon gets credit, you know, America gets credit for being like the number one superpower, even though, you know, China and Russia is starting to match that and they're starting to... um 
fall from that number one spot quickly, right? But you got to think about it. In the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be hundreds. We can't even put a number on it, but it's going to be greater even than America is, um, you know, to the world. You know, because at one time, they, when it speaks in Revelation 17 and 18, the scarlet, the gold and everything, at one time, they was held in high regards. You know, people all around the world wanted to come here to chase that American dream. But our kingdom is going to be greater than that, greater than America was in a prime, way greater, you know. So we have those things waiting for us, you know, and we're going to get those things. So that's pretty much what um, gave me the motivation to make this lesson, you know, to stay on fire. You know, they try to put my fire out too, man, because if you look at my last couple months, I was on fire, right? Well, really, since I ever, my very first video, I've been on fire, but... I was I was flaming, man, and then, you know, all that stuff happened, and now you got to come back, but it is what it is, you know, some brothers have it even worse with the whole thing getting took down, this is Revelation 13, verse 9, it says, if any man have an ear, let him hear, this is a very popular um, couple precepts right here, he that lead in captivity should go into captivity, he that kill it with the sword must be killed with the sword, here's the patience and faith of the saints, why, because we got to lean, now I'm just using this as, you know, like, a title, a theme, but we're the lean holders of this world, of the kingdom, so yeah, they have it right now, and they led us in captivity, but they gonna go in captivity, you see, and we have patience and faith, remember I said, what's more important than silver and the gold, the faith is, so let's jump all the way back to the beginning, right, that's the last book, so let's jump to the first book, just to prove to you, you know, you can't get over the prophecies, you know, once, once you know the truth about the prophecies, you know, um, that's what's going to get you far in your understanding, you know, knowing the prophecies. This is Genesis 27, right? Um, this was the promise that was given to us, you know, our, our, our forefather, and it goes to his seed. This is verse 28. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of earth and plenty of corn and wine. This is still promised to us. We're still going to get this. It says, let people serve thee. And nations bow down to thee, be Lord over thy brother, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that cursed thee, and blessed be everyone that blessed thee. Now, when you put this together with Psalms 83, look at everybody that cursed us, all the other nations, right? So, it, it really make more sense for them to bless us, right? And try to bless us the best way they can, even though they can't escape their judgment for the things they already did. Right, because then maybe they could have some type of blessings in the kingdom. But the ones that curse us, you know, we just gotta take that shit on the chin. You know, it's hard. It's very, very, very hard when you sitting back and you thinking about slavery days and some of the things that was happening. You go into the details and the history of some of the things that was happening to our people. You know, it's like a burning fire in your heart. But you gotta remember all that shit that they did. It's going to turn right back around on them. And we're getting very close to the end for that happening, right? Um, very, very close to that um, that time, right? Let's jump to... And that makes it even... That makes it even greater, right? Because we went through it. We know we went through it. We know how horrible those things was. So when we finally got the power on our hand... Right. To execute those vengeance back. Imagine how great that's going to be. You know, um, Tupac said revenge is the sweetest thing next to getting, you know, you two won't let us say that. But next to getting, you know, whatever they call it, box. Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, I was um, I was like in a store or something like that. And I was in the office building. Right. And. You know, this guy was trying to make it real hard for me to do certain things, you know, and I had to stop myself and I just had to realize. And you want to know what, what I what I told myself, you know, and this is the same thing whenever I see law enforcement and, you know, and, and they exhort and they power. You know, I just tell myself, I say, you know what, you, you got the power right now. And sometimes shit, I even catch myself telling them that, you know, they making it hard. Ain't nothing you can do about it. I say, you know what? I say, you got the power right now. Right now you got it. And then they be looking confused. Like, what do you mean? Like. Yeah, but those, it's kind of like Superman and, 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 and his hidden identity. We kind of have that thing going on being um, Hebrew Israelites, prophets, you know, walking as prophets. But when you out there in the everyday world, 
you know, you kind of have that dynamic going on, but really people don't even know that you're a prophet of the Lord. You could possibly be a prophet of the Lord, you know, so um, that's pretty much what it is. It's prophesying. You got the power right now. You know, Esau world, he got the power right now, but not for long, though. This is Daniel 2, verse 44. And that's what you got to tell them. You know, when they making it hard for you, you got to realize where you at. You got to realize you ain't got the power and you just got to be like, look, you got the power right now. Right now you do. But when we get the power, man, when it's our time, when it's our turn, ain't no turning back. That's the difference. Ain't no losing it. We going to be on top forever. Matter of fact, Daniel chapter 2, 44. And in the days of these kings, should a God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Never. Right. And the kingdom should be not left, should, should not be left to other people, but because it's only going to be left to the Israelites. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Right. And that was that. That's the kingdom of heaven. So, yeah, Esau got his kingdoms right now. You know, he had his kingdoms of the Greeks, the Romans, you know, even today, um, the R Roman revised, you know, um, America, you know, the EU nations, NATO, right? But that shit's going to be broken in pieces as you see it happening right be before our eyes. And then the kingdom of heaven is going to be established and then it's going to be forever. So you got to remember that, man. Our whole thing right now is not to be the baddest, not to be the biggest, not to be the strongest, not to be the smartest. Our whole thing right now is faith having faith which goes hand in hand with survival you know because what what is your faith going to lead to salvation that's your whole thing right now seek ye the kingdom of heaven right and in order to get to the kingdom of heaven you got to have that salvation right so you got to be saved by the lord right so that's our whole thing is to be saved you know salvation you know so you're not trying to be out here being the toughest dude on the internet and then like we've seen some examples lately now you got dudes coming to you in person getting on that with you because you talk so crazy on the internet that's not our job our job is just to teach the gospel you see what i'm saying and you want to make it to the end that's why it says you got to be wise that's why it says you got to be harmless as a as a dove you know you got to be like um like a lamb you know like yeah how you how shy was you got to be like a lamb is a lamb out here roaring like a lion on the internet talking shit and then when they get in person you see what i'm saying now you got problems on your street ministry because you on a because you on on the internet no we supposed to be like a lamb we gonna be like a lion when we come back with that power. We had a brother come down to the camp. We was talking about it's in the video. I haven't. I'm uploaded, but it's called Revelations, chapter. I want to say, seventeen breakdown, right? And um, and halfway through that, we got to talking to the brother, but it kind of seemed like he might have had the spirit on him. Of he might have wanted to fight, but I didn't get to tell this to the brother. But I wish I would have. I wanted to tell him like, look, bro. I know a lot of our people get that like fucking I'm gonna crash out. I'm gonna fight right now. But we don't need to fight right now. Wait till we get the power. Then when we get the power, right? Then we could come back with our power to fight and we get the victory. You see, that's the difference, you know? So there's just a time and a place for everything, you know? But yeah, like I said, we're the lean holders, right? And Esau ain't paid up. So what happens when you gotta lean on your title? And you don't make your payments, then your shit get repo. And what's gonna happen to the world, to the kingdom, right? It's about to get repoed, and the Israelites are about to take over. That's who's next. Not China, not Russia. Even though the Lord is sending God and made God against Mystery Babylon, Ezekiel 38. But what did the Lord say? He said he's against God and made God. Even though he's sending them against Mystery Babylon, is gonna use them as the instrument, he's still against them too. They're not up for rulership next. Nobody's up for rulership next but the Israelites. I mean, let's prove it. This is a planet. Isaiah 14, right? Verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. That's who he's choosing. It says, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. 
for service and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they wore, and they shall rule over their oppressors. What does that sound like, right? That sounds like vengeance, right? You oppressed us. Then we're going to get to oppress you. You took us in captivity. We're going to get to take you in captivity. Verse 3 says, And it should come to pass in the day that the Lord should give thee rest. Who is thee? The Israelites. I just told you in verse 1. Um, see, and you get a lot of guys that say, No, salvation is for everybody. But you can never get over prophecy. How do you understand the Bible? You have to learn the prophecies, right? So Isaiah 14 is a future prophecy that didn't ha that, that hasn't happened. And it tells you who's going to have rulership and it tells you who, what's going to happen to the other people. It's very simple, right? Um, verse 3 says, And it should come to pass in the day that the Lord would give thee rest from thy sorrows and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve that thou should take up this proverb against the king of babylon and say how has thy oppressor ceased that go in the city ceased right because we're going to take it over now like you said um here i'll go back to the book of daniel right that hard bondage the it says we uh, should have rest from the sorrow the fear and the hard bondage wherein we was um made to serve right so now if you jump back to daniel Right, this is a studying moment right here, a learning moment, right? If you go back to Daniel 9, right, verse 11, I want to say, it says, Yeah, all Israel has transgressed by thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is a part upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because he, because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judge us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done to Jerusalem. Meaning we had the worst slavery out of anybody out of any nation of people on our earth right and that's when you get back to isaiah 14 it says we're going to finally get our rest right that's what we're waiting for right uh we're going to finally get our rest from those things that happen so we went through the worst slavery and then the other it's going to be the other nation's turn right and i'll prove it this is lamentations 4 verse 21 it says rejoice and be glad O daughter of edom that dwelleth in the land of Oz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shall be drunken and shall make thyself naked. So that cup of slavery that we had to deal with right now, that's going to pass through Esau. He's number one on that list in Psalms 83 as um, our enemies. Verse 22, it says, The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. So just like Isaiah 14, our punishment is going to be accomplished. It's going to be over with. And then what? He will no more carry thee away into captivity, meaning we're going to get that rest, right? He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So then it's going to be time for those curses to be put on the other nations, right? Now, if you jump back to Jeremiah 49, they don't believe it, right? Now, verse 12, it says, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup has surely drunken. Because we're supposed to be a holy and a particular people. But we sinned against our Lord, so we had to drink of that cup of his wrath, right? It says, And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? So should the Edomites, the other nations, go unpunished? Thou shall not go unpunished, but thou shall surely drink of it. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra, America is called Mystery Babylon, it's called Spiritual Egypt, it's called Syria, it's called um, Basra, right? It's, um shall become a destillation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse, and all the seeds thereof shall be perpetual wastes. So that's what's going to happen to them for what they did to the Lord's chosen people, man, um, the Israelites, you know. So, yeah, they took rulership for a period of time, but it ain't going to last long, too much longer, right? And this is very, very great times that we're coming into. This is Isaiah 61. This is the gospel. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he, the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings, right? The good gospel. And to the meek, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound, right? Literally, we are in prisons, you know, and then America, Mystery Babylon is a gigantic prison and judgment for the Israelites, right? 
It says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. This is why they don't want us to raise. This is why they're so scared of a so-called black Messiah, they say. Because they know with that comes vengeance. And they know that means they're going to have to give over pretty much the kingdom, the rulership on the earth to the Israelites. And they're going to have to go into slavery. It says, uh, to comfort all, all that mourn and appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, the Israelites, right? To give unto them beauty for ashes and oil for joy of mourning and garment of praises for the spirit of heaviness that we have, right? That they might be called trees of righteousness because that's the whole thing, us becoming righteous, right? But these spiritual, I mean, these fleshy bodies, we can't, but that's why the Lord is going to put the law, statutes, and commandments in our hearts and give us those um, uncorruptible, right, um, immortal bodies that it speaks about in 1 Corinthians 15 when we're changing the twinkle in the eye. It says, the plenty of the Lord that he might be glorified and they shall build the old oasis and they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and vine dresser. What's that? That's vengeance. Let's keep going. Verse six. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Man should call you ministers of God. So they're going to have to admit that we're the people. It says ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall ye boast themselves. We're going to get all the riches either way it go. Either way it go, we're going to get all the riches. I ain't got to save up not one dime. I ain't got to save up one penny. I ain't got to save up no gold. I ain't got to invest into no Bitcoin. None of that bullshit. Because we're going to get it all in the kingdom. We're going to get it all. Right? Uh, Revelation 21 verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. And there was no more sea. Right? We're going to have a new rulership on earth. That's what it's talking about. And it's going to be by the Israelites. Right? Um... Right, like I said, we're the lean holders, right? And Esau ain't been doing what he's supposed to be doing, so we finna repo, we finna repo this, right? Verse two, it says, and I and I John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, right? Because we gonna go into something called the new covenant, right? It's prepared for us, but we're we're gonna go under the bond of it, right? It says, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with man and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. Isaiah 14 tells you who the day is he's talking about the Israelites and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And that's why I read that because it tells you the same thing in Isaiah 14. But in Isaiah 14, it gives you more details that it's talking about the Israelites, right? So here you just say, oh, he's just talking about men. But this is being quoted from Isaiah 14 and New Jerusalem is telling you who it is. It's the Israelites, um, the house of Israel, the house of Judah, which are the 12 tribes of Israel. When we go back to the land, we go under that new covenant, that bond, that marriage with our Lord. And then we're going to get power over the earth. And then that's when we're going to be in our rulership. We're going to have rulership of the earth, which is coming very, very soon. So this is a very, very cool picture that I found. You know, they got their long garments on, you know, for the most part, you know, and, um, um, hey, Time's coming. Salvation to the election. Lord.